Many people around the world are asking themselves questions about Judaism, about this religion. People are questioning our motives and asking questions about the nature of our religion and our tradition without really knowing things because even though that our religion is not a secret, we have books that been printed in many languages and are very known and famous and speakers that are talking about the topics of our religion online on social media so there are no big secrets here but there are some aspects to it that naturally will be revealed more to the ones who are part of that religion and that tradition and that community and not to outsiders, not to people that live in different cultures, different areas. One of the most important things is the understanding about who is a Jewish person and who is not. So today, and when I mention today, I don't mean that it's a new thing. I mean that until today, for a long, long time, since the time of the exile of the tribes of Israel from being part of the public of Israel, when they have been divided and the kingship that stayed in the Holy Land where and until today was and until today is the kingship of King David and the tribe of Yehuda, that after them we are being called Yehudim, Jewish. So then, since that time, the public of Israel, if they want to join us back, they need to convert to Judaism. And also Gentiles from different nations, when they want and willing to join the public of Israel, the people of Israel, so they need to convert to Judaism. And that conversion has very simple rules, but many ways um, to follow it so a person can claim okay yes I am Jewish but it won't make him Jewish a real Jewish conversion must take place in a Jewish courthouse that the rabbis that are sitting in that courthouse will be real um, observant that they will be very very honest and truthful with their intentions of converting and also being observant about their own way of life and keeping the traditional Judaism based on the rules that the Gemara and the oral Torah by the sages guided us and and explain to us that that is the way. Now, there are many people who are just searching for spirituality and are willing to connect themselves to Judaism and they're willing to learn the wisdom and to purchase the knowledge. And it's also a great thing. But that does not make the person a Jew. Now, in all those, all those years that I'm teaching, I don't remember myself recommending a person to convert. I'm not against it. I just think that it's a very inner thing that the person should find within himself the desire to convert and the willingness to, to throw everything that he's familiar to 
to him to leave it all behind him and to go and start a new path a new road in life this is something very complex that me myself I wouldn't push a person to do so if people are asking me should I convert or I'm dreaming to convert or I'm willing to convert so again I'm I'm warning them that the path might be a bit hard and not easy and that they might face and confront obstacles, difficulties, challenges that won't make their life so easy. So conversion is one thing and learning about Judaism is another. And I think that in most cases the most blessed and important thing that the person that desires to come close to Judaism is to start with a few years of learning about Judaism and if you have the passion and the desire to be practicing Judaism so there are certain things that you can do that are not life-changing and they will help you to come closer to Judaism like learning from books of righteous people, the wisdom of Judaism, trying to enjoy the meals of Shabbat, trying to light candles of Shabbat, eating kosher food. Like you have many things that a person can do that won't obligate him in 100% to the highway of Orthodox Judaism or like keeping it in a strict and straight way that all his life will have to change from one side to the other. This is exaggerated for the majority of the people of the world that are desiring to come closer to Judaism. So I recommend to start the process with the acceptance that it will take a while, that it might take a few years of learning and observing and finding the right people, the right community, the right public that you would like to share your life with and to be part of their life and really to find a location that will be good for you, for family. If those are things that you will find that after a couple of years, three, four, five years of connecting yourself to Judaism, you're still going to desire to be part of a community, to be part of a synagogue to become Jewish with with your body as well so then the process of Orthodox conversion is the best way even though that it's time-consuming and in many ways it's it's to take a big mission it's a big operation a big obligation upon yourself but to learn the wisdom and to enjoy the wisdom and the culture of Judaism. This is something that any person in the world um, can explore, can enjoy. And I recommend it. I think that uh, our religion has many, many treasures to share with the world. A lot of wisdom that been carved and written and imprinted by the sages and other righteous people along the generations that uh, cannot be ignored or shouldn't be ignored and uh, is fascinating like the wisdom of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev or <coughs> the greatness of the Rabbi Menachem Mendel Milubavitch and wisdom of Kabbalah by righteous people who <coughs> <coughs> to learn Kabbalah is a very complex thing that I heard conversations of people who claims to teach Kabbalah very foreign, very dark, very awful methods that are very far from true and real Kabbalah so I like truly, honestly, really recommend or not to learn Kabbalah or uh, to try to observe and look deeply into the sources of um, of Kabbalah who you learn it from I don't want to mention names but uh, a 
couple of months ago someone sent me a message, a video note of one of the most famous teachers of Kabbalah today, very not righteous, a really not righteous man, very, very disappointing, very scary, very dark, hating the sages, hating the Torah, hating the innocent way of beautiful, beautiful, honest, simple Judaism, like hating it, despiting the the beauty of the sweetness of the Torah and Jewish life and only desiring the false methods of the dark secrets and and the names, the Kabbalistic codes and numeral values, it's like dark and spooky and, and, and evil and very bad, very bad. When you see people with anger, people that are claiming, demanding, forcing, stay away, stay away from, from these kind of teachings. This is a fire that is not meant to, to be spread out. This is foolishness, this is evil. Fire that is healthy is warmth that comes with love, that comes with appreciation, with kindness. It's more like a hug, like uh, someone that is collecting you, that is bringing you home, that cares for you, that will take care of you in the future. But if someone is coming and claiming and demanding and arguing and rebuking others and fighting and of course that everything for money and honor and like crazy amounts once a student came to me, she was a lawyer, and told me that a certain institute that is teaching Kabbalah forced her to donate, to sponsor a printing of the book of the Zohar of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai with $60,000 contribution. It's, it's a crime. It's not a distribution. It's a crime. It's it's an evil act of, of stealing and robbing money from innocent people who doesn't have a clue what to do with their lives and they're searching. And when they find some knowledgeable person who impresses them with his knowledge, with his, I don't know, dark forces, powers, false powers, There are also people now in Israel who are claiming to find Mashiach, that they found Mashiach, Mashiach is going in Eretz Israel, Mashiach is already here. If you hear that Mashiach is here, trust me, he's not here. Mashiach will come when no one, no one will, will know that he already came. When he will come, no one will notice. Suddenly it will be after redemption. You can look back and say, whoa, how did it all happen? That's how Mashiach will come. Mashiach is teaching in Natanya. Mashiach is teaching in Petach Tikva. Classes of the Mashiach, guys. He is not the Mashiach, not him and not others who are claiming to be Mashiach. This is why the Torah itself revealed to us that Elijah the prophet will be the one who declare who Mashiach is and not his students, so-called students. You should be a rabbi for you to have students. You cannot be just someone who desires power. You should be an honorable person. You should be a good, kind, and nice person. To have the merit that from heaven they will choose you to pass on wisdom that will plant life into the hearts of your followers, of your listeners just to have physical knowledge, to have a great powerful memory that memorizes books by heart and knows how to read and how to explain them, that's not enough for you to be called a rabbi. A rabbi is someone who cares from all the people of Israel. 
He cares about the tribes, the lost tribes. He cares for the poor, for the lonely, for the brokenhearted. He is with his people. He's not putting himself above above the public. He does not consider himself to be more important than the poor ones of his flock. So we need to attach ourselves as much as we can to the most beautiful things of Judaism and to attach and connect ourselves to the innocent side, to the kind side of the Torah, to attach ourselves to the true righteous ones and to stay away from the impure fire that brings more darkness and damage to the world and goodness. May Hashem answer our prayers and remove the darkness away and reveal the true light to us all and bring happiness into our hearts.